Hello folks, welcome. Uh, I'm just doing a couple of little dishes just down here, so we'll swing, swing the camera down here. They're very small little dishes, but I got inspired by a something I saw in a book. Do you ever get inspired by things you see in a book? This is an old book I got. Uh, Clay and Glazes for the Potter by Daniel Rhodes. Very good book. Uh, a lot of very useful information in here. Anyway, there was one particular little dish that, I, that caught my eye that I rather liked. That one there on the right. And um, so I thought I'd have a go at making it and see if I could copy the design. Um, so, I've got that kind of here, and um, I made a couple of little dishes. One I've already done, I've already engraved. This is basically what it is. Uh, it's kind of subtle form, uh, sort of squared, but with these little kind of rounded bits there on the corners. Um, with this one I've trimmed the foot. You can't actually see how the foot is on that particular one there in the photograph. Uh, in fact the one in the photograph is moulded. It's a moulded dish. So what I want to try to do is is, is copy the uh, the design, the engraved design. So let's see if we can get the camera set up here. So uh, something like that. I hope that will. I hope we'll get in the picture. Yeah. Actually, uh, yeah. If I'm sort of down here. So what I'm going to do is, firstly let me explain, so these were thrown on the wheel, alright, and then I, 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 I squared them off, the dish on the wheel, and then later, when it was leather hard, I made these little lines here in the side, um, and I trimmed the foot. Now there's another one that I've done here which has a different kind of trimmed foot. Uh, I hope you can see that, um, the difference. Uh, this, this one is a sort of recessed foot and this one is, the foot is cut away like that. Um, so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a, a broken off hacksaw blade and um, just got a, an angle ground on the on the end of the hacksaw blade here. So what I've got to do is maybe a little bit awkward for me to do this. I've got to try to copy that design. So I've got to do a couple of two little lines underneath underneath the the rim there, going all the way around. So I just, you just have to do it sort of in, in sections or side, one side and then another side and then around. Try to keep my hand, trying to keep my hand steady, which is the challenge, isn't it? Doing something like this. Yeah. So Okay, so we've gone around once. 
I'll see how far I can bring the camera in because if this is too far away it's not going to be uh, all right I'll try to keep myself there so it's in focus hopefully so that's that's one line I've done around there I'm gonna, now going to do another one just below it I, what I should say is this has got an iron oxide slip that I put over and what I'm doing now is I'm cutting through the slip, you see. Just in case you wondered. Sometimes as I'm cutting with the tool, I hit a bit of grog, you know, in the clay, and it kind of wants to deviate the tool off. Okay, so I've got two lines there. What I now need to do, I should say I am trying to copy this, okay? This is just not my, this is not my loose interpretation of this. I'm actually... I'm actually trying to do a, a copy of it, all right? At the end of the day, it will only be my loose interpretation of it, but... So... Well, you might think to yourself, oh, Simon, I'm not very impressed copying, copying somebody else's work, you know, gosh. I thought, I thought you were an original artist or something. Just in case there are anybody out there who thinks things like that, you need to realise that actually none of us are original and If you feel inspired by something, have a go at it, copy it. It's, it's, it's actually it's one of the best ways of learning is by copying. And there's nothing to be actually ashamed of whatsoever. Yeah, it'd probably be a bit easier if the clay is not too hard. Okay, so let's just refer a moment back to the 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 what I'm copying. So basically, got this sort of framework here within within the form uh, held around the edge with a couple of lines. And I've, all I've done is the other line. So I've sort of, I've done the, as it were, the skeleton. I've now got to hang off the skeleton, the, the, the decoration that he's got going on. Well, he's got like a, a sort of crosshatch thing going on along there. So what we're going to do is... Uh, You 
see what I've done there, just a little cross hatch. Uh, we'll do a bit more, a lot of the top here. It's kind of difficult because I've got to get my hand, you see, inside down into the form, but I can't because of the edge. So it's a little bit a little bit awkward, you know what I mean? Apart from anything else, because I'm having, I'm having to do it on a camera as well, you know. Doesn't make it any easier, does it? Oop. Make sure I hold the tool the right way around. I find a broken off hacksaw blade is is quite good for this kind of thing. So uh, now we've got to go back again. The other, the other direction of the cross hatch. Cross hatch is a sort of decorative scrofito, it doesn't have to be scrofito, but decorative process. It's sort of a filling in, infilling. It, it kind of it adds just something kind of like shading, I suppose. All right, so we've done that. What we've got to do now is to wait for my neighbour to go. Um, what we've got to do now is there's some there's some flower uh, sort of flowers or something growing in the middle here. There's three stems, so we're going to do one like that. Another one. And another one just like that. Um, so now we're going to just put some leaves on the stems like this. Yeah, sometimes when I'm trying to do that, you hit uh, my clay's got a bit of grog in it, you see. So it Yeah, you want to have a go at doing something like this. Because anybody can do this. It's nothing, it's nothing very, really difficult. And you'll find that if you copy, do a bit of copying, you'll get inspired. And you'll, you'll do some of your own, you know. Alright, so I've done that. I now notice it's got in the four corners here, down in here, I've got to do a little little leaf or something, or it looks like a actually it looks like a fern. See if I can bring that up so you can see what we're doing so far. Uh, yeah, just in the corner there. Um, oh no, I've got to add some, some little birds sh shortly. So we'll just uh, do these ferns. Like that. Quite a fiddle, you know, that's for sure. OK. 
Okay, we've done that. Now we've got to add uh, the three flying birds on each section that's left. So uh, the way I'm going to do these is do like the letter M. So I've, gone, I've done the wings, which is like the letter M, you see. It's very difficult to get in there, that's the problem. I'll show you this in a minute, um, close up, and you can see yeah, we can see what a mess you've made of it, son. <laughs> well, you've got to try these things, you see. I'll just go around, I'll do the, 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 the M's Which is the really the wings, you see. It's quite a good way of doing birds, actually. All right. Now we're going to put in the the feet, which are trailing behind, and the in the beak, you see. That's all you have to do is like just do an impression, you see. It's, it doesn't got to be... It hasn't got to be super detailed. There's no point because this is going to have glaze over it and you know what glaze, that'll make it, it'll lose, it'll lose some of the, the detail in any case, you see. So, yeah, I like doing birds like this, kind of. Yeah. What you've got to do is you've got to make sure, you see, when you're doing scraffito like this, that you are in fact cutting through the slip enough to the clay underneath. That is important. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the, there's two that I've done here, and I'm going to put them down, I'm making a right mess of my book, aren't I? Because this is red iron oxide and it's getting on the pages. There's two that I've done here. I want you to see them, and you can tell me if you think I've done if you think I've done a good job or not. And um, let's uh, bring the camera down. So uh, let's just take out the zoom. Yes. So let's just have a look. See, there's the, there's the original. Now, the, the birds that I was referring to are these guys uh, here, you see. Those are the birds. These are the ferns in the corner. Uh, this is the crosshatch uh, down the side here. And this is this sort of plant growing here in the middle. So, there's that one. I'll show you the one I've just done. You see, um, and then what I did before that, this guy over here, we can 
give you some detail on those little birds there. You see what I mean? See, if you turn it around that way, it's like a, it's like a letter M, isn't it? You know what I mean? And then, and then you put the, the, the neck and the beak, you see, of the bird flying. Uh, I don't know if I did so well on this one, but there are the birdies, the fern in the corner. Okay. Well, folks, uh, maybe something a bit different, but I just thought I'd show you that. Um, just get this back on the tripod here a minute. Hang on. Ooh. That's it. So, yes. Yeah, I just thought I'd sort of show you that because uh, uh, and to encourage you also to um, to copy. When you see something that inspires you, get it, get on the wheel, get the clay and have a go making it because you'll learn so much by doing it. It'll never be exactly the same as the original anyway. It'll always come out a little bit different. So don't be afraid to do that. Just these little couple of dishes to show you. And yeah, I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with those. Let's hope that they come out right and that they fire nicely. This little, uh, I didn't read to you the writing that it says here. It says grey stoneware plate. Shino ware, Japan, 16th century. The moulded form is covered with a dark iron bearing slip, which is cut away to make the design. The glaze, largely felspar, has a cloudy, semi opaque quality. Alright, so have a go at one of those. Uh, yeah, visit my website, simonleachpottery.com, and um, what, what have we got? Uh, I've got a workshop, workshops coming up in um, Lockport, New York, and also a school I've got to go to over in, um, I think it's called John Jay High School, something like that, over in West Chester County, New York. Anyway. That's something I'm doing in a school. But uh, the next workshop we're actually having here will be October 20, 24th and 25th, I believe. Check on my website, it gives the dates. And then I'm gonna be uh, doing another one here November 7th and 8th. And yeah, that's the upcoming workshops here. There's two workshops left here. So if you, if you fancy joining us at the end of the the end of the summer into the fall, then uh, write write to me. Uh, we've got space, so yeah. Okay, folks. Well, thanks for joining us, and as always, keep practicing. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>